Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. This morning, wonderful day to be alive and worshiping our King and glorifying His holy name and and just pressing in, pressing on to the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things which are behind, we press on to the high call, to the mark of the prize. The call of God in His Son, Christ Jesus, our beloved Savior and Lord. We just keep pressing on. We can't stop. We have to just keep pressing in and in loving our King and worshiping Him and just doing what He tells us to do. Being obedient to Him and loving Him and even if the way is hard and seems contrary to all religion because it is contrary to all religion except that pure religion and undefiled which is to help the poor and the needy and the widow, the orphan that is true religion according to the scriptures hallelujah and that is what the Holy Ghost will bring to us today the reminder of the importance of his holy word that he has preserved for us as believers it is a sure foundation hallelujah and it is filled with his power and his life hallelujah I know many people on YouTube, many people who follow these uh, these don't read the Bible cults on YouTube, and that you only have to follow the red letters, Jesus' words, and they throw out the rest of the Bible, or they'll pick and choose little verses here and there they want to use, but they are cutting out the foundation of truth of the holy apostles and prophets, as the apostle Paul called it. Hallelujah. There is truth throughout the scriptures from Genesis 1 all the way through to Revelation 22 that we can learn from and grow in Christ, hallelujah, and learn more and more each day. But if we don't read them, we do err. Okay, we do err. Jesus talked to the Sadducees. They were trying to pin Jesus against the wall. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he told the Pharisees, and this is a question I want to ask you uh non-believing Bible people, okay? You, 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 love, you say you love the Bible, you say the Bible, you need to read the Bible, but you don't believe the Bible, okay? You, you demote the Scripture, and you promote a voice, a voice that cannot be backed up with the Scripture, okay? You do greatly err. Let me ask you a question. Was the, were the Pharisees Jesus' brother? Okay? Now... We hear t taught today that the Pharisees were Jews, you know, and, and they pretended to be Jews. They pretended to be true, okay? Their whole game was based upon money and upon a following and upon controlling people and keeping people uh, under their feet, and they used religion to do so. Their tradition, okay? And the tradition today, a lot of tradition today in the world is to trounce the scripture, pervert the scripture, change the scripture, make it say something it's not saying, take it out of context. This is what people are doing today. Or focusing in on just one part of the scripture. And Jesus told these Pharisees after they asked him about the resurrection and it's in Matthew 22:29 and also in, in uh, Mark 12:24 Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, okay, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God, okay, nor the power of God. Verse 30, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are the angels of God in heaven, okay. So Jesus is explaining to them what the truth is, but they were erring, not knowing the Scriptures. Now the Scriptures at that time were from Genesis all the way through Malachi, okay? These were the writings of the prophets and the historians, okay, that the Holy Ghost had given at this time for His people Israel, all right? Now, you have to understand the Scriptures are given to the believer. Hallelujah. To the believer. If you're not a believer, you're not going to want the Scripture. Do you understand that? You're, you're not going to want to read the Scriptures if you're not a believer, 
a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, one who has Christ within, is Christ within you today? Because if Christ is within you, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is going to guide you to the Word of God. It's going to guide you to the Holy Scriptures. To read and to feed. Okay? Desire the sincere milk of the Word, Peter said in 1 Peter. As newborn babes, do you desire that? Truly the Scripture does not lie. Truly the Scripture speaks truth. And when you're hearing a voice, you have to take that voice, you have to check it. Okay? You have to test all things by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost, and by the written Word. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to write down something, have a man write something down, and then turn around and change his mind, and go contrary to that. Okay? The principle is always going to be there. It's always going to be the same. And that principle is to lift up Christ. To form Christ in us. Not that you form Christ in you. You can't form Christ in yourself. You're not almighty. Okay? You're not the potter. We are not the potter. We are the clay. And we have to be pliable in the Father's hands. And if we're not pliable, He'll throw us down. See? And make a new vessel out of that lump. That means He'll wreck our lives. He's done that with me before. Just wrecked my life. It made me a new vessel. Brought me back new. Hallelujah. Fashioned me different. See, God has to bring us through many experiences to form Christ in us. Many times of testing and trial and suffering. And this is the formation of Christ in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But He does it to us because He loves us. Hallelujah. But these non-Bible believing people who don't believe, okay, they're non-believers actually, because they don't love the Scriptures. You, you, you talk to Brother Yun from China. You talk to the Chinese underground church. You ask them about the Holy Scriptures. You ask them, why do they sit and memorize whole books of the Bible? Whole chapters of the Bible. Memorize. Because see, that they know that's their bread. See? Because every time you read the Scripture with an attitude of gratitude, thanking God, with the attitude, the simplicity that is in Christ, humbling yourselves, coming before a holy God, holiness which we do not know about, holiness which we only think we know about, holiness that is so holy and pure, God is so other than we are in His essence of who He is. And we think we know something about holiness. And we've set up standards of holiness by man's thinking, by man's understanding of what holiness is. But it's finite. It's not infinite. Holiness is when it's just... It's like... We, we still don't have a grasp on it, but it's something like giving. Okay, giving. You think about giving. God gave all. Who else has ever done that? Who has ever given all? I mean all. Who? But our Father in Heaven gave all. He gave Himself. In His Son. He gave Himself. In His Son. See? That is purity. That is holiness. Jesus became sin for us. He took all the sin of the world for us. And this is what the Scripture was speaking of, like in Isaiah chapter 53, the suffering servant. But the Pharisees, okay, were they Jesus' brothers? See, because people come at us and they come at us and say, Hey, why are you attacking Jan Boshoff? He's your brother. He's not my brother. See, Jesus told the Pharisees, Ye are of your father, the devil. Okay? Now, we know Jesus was not of the devil. So they were not brothers. Do you understand? They went contrary to the Scripture. They did not know the Scripture. 
nor the power of God. See? Look at Mark chapter 12. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err? You wander away. You, you go away from the truth. You make you cause people to roam and to stray away from the truth. Huh? Because ye know not the Scriptures, nor the power of God. See? Knowing the Scriptures is tied to the power of God. Don't you understand that the life and death is in the power of the tongue? And our Father in Heaven speaks words and He has men write them down. And the people that don't love the Scripture, they cut it with a knife and throw it in the fire like Jehoiakim did. And they dissect it and trisect it and they throw it away because they don't want to be obedient to the Scripture. Oh, they'll tell you, be obedient. And if you're not 100% obedient to Jesus, to the voice, then you're not going to make it in. You're going to hell. But what did Jesus say? And then they say, only the red letters. Well, what do the red letters say? The red letters. Ye do err because you do not know the Scripture. Nor the power of God. See? <clears throat> but you won't repent because you love the following that you have. Because people set you up as a God, as a guru as a master, as a father, as a teacher. But they won't let the Holy Ghost teach them because when the Holy Ghost teaches a person, He guides them into all truth. And He doesn't guide them contrary to what He's revealed in the Scripture. Hallelujah. That's why we have the Scripture today. God has preserved it for us. Because of all the false doctrine, all the evil seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, that the Father knew would be unleashed upon the earth in this final hour. We must test everything by the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus, and by the Holy Word of God, the Scripture. It will line up. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Okay, let's go through the Scripture. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, it says, right here, you got to know the Scripture. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 John 5. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. Three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Now, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, okay? And it's profitable, the Apostle Paul told us. For correction, for reproof, for salvation. Hallelujah, okay? It's profitable. So, see, they agree in one. So when you tell people they don't need the Scripture, you are a liar. And when you are a liar, you are of your father, the devil. Do you understand that? It's that simple. Jesus told the Pharisees, look at John chapter 8. Okay, he, he rebuked them. He, he set them straight because they were they thought they were somebody. They brought that poor woman in caught in adultery and Jesus just said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. So you have to have two witnesses, okay, according to the Scripture to establish a truth. Okay? So when Jesus said that, they were one witness and Jesus was the other witness. Okay? So, they caught this woman in adultery and so they were witnessing against her. And so Jesus said, because He knew the woman, He knew her heart. In John chapter 2, it's recorded that He knew all men's hearts. He didn't need anybody to tell Him what was in man. Hallelujah. But what did Jesus say? Oh, the grace. Huh? Oh, the grace. The grace, the grace, the grace. Jesus said, let him who is without sin among you cast the first stone. They all walked away. They all walked away. Oh, they were holy in their attire. They were holy outside, but inside, Jesus said, they were filled with dead men's bones. Okay? Hallelujah. So Jesus said, where are all your accusers, woman? And she said, oh, no man accuses me. They're, they're all gone. He said, neither do I accuse you. 
See? Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. That's what he told her. Hallelujah. See? He didn't condemn her. He forgave her. He washed away her iniquity. Hallelujah. See? That's grace. Oh, there's so much I could share right now. I'm going to share it. Hallelujah. I'm going to share it with you. Listen. In John chapter 8, Jesus is speaking. Now, He's talking to the Pharisees. And let's just start right here. Hallelujah. They answered in verse 33, We be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Okay? Committed there is, it's a, to make or do. Okay? Abide. Agree. Appoint. It's like your, your will, you're taking your will, and you're deciding, I am going to go out and I'm going to break God's commandment. I'm going to transgress the law of God. See, that, that's what that word means. It's a willful knowing what you're doing and you're going out to do it because you are a sinner. Okay? Hallelujah. It's not when you fall, when you stumble. Okay? David said he, a good man falls seven times, huh? But he, he's not utterly cast down because he gets back up and he repents. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. And the servant abideth not in the house, Jesus said, forever. But the Son abideth ever. Hallelujah. Verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He's talking to the Pharisees. But ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. See? I speak that which I have seen with my Father. And ye, talking to the Pharisees, ye do that which ye have seen with your Father. With your Father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our Father. Abraham is our Father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. Hmm. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither I, neither came I of myself. Jesus said, I didn't come of myself, but He sent me. Hallelujah. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. <clears throat> ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. Yeah. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. There's no truth in the devil. There's no truth in these people that down the Bible. Any part of it. There's no truth in them. See, because a true believer is one who believes what the Lord has written in His Word. Do you believe it? Do you hold to it? Do you read it? Do you cherish it? Do you thank God for it? Do you study it? Do you cry out to God? Give me revelation, Lord. Help me, Father. I'm seeking Your face, Lord. I'm seeking You. I'm having a hard time here, Father. You pray. You're seeking God. I'm having a hard time, Lord. I don't know what to do, Lord. The enemy's coming all around me, Lord. He, he's, he's coming in, Jesus. And the Lord whispers to you, open up the Word. Read the Word. And, and so you say, Lord, I don't know what... And you just have a you just have an impression from the Father, from the holy place within inside, from deep inside in your spirit, man. You have an impression. So you go over to, to Psalm one forty two, see? And, and the enemy's coming in. And, and, and so you begin to read Psalm one forty two. And and you know it's a prayer when David was in the cave, see. David was running from Saul. David had enemies all around him in the natural realm. And it was something going on in the Spirit that was manifesting in the natural and it was happening to David. And he says, I cried unto the Lord. 
With my voice, with my voice, I cried. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. See? So we know we have to cry out. When the enemy's coming in like a flood, we cry out. We say, God, lift up the standard of the precious blood of Your Son and the Word of Your truth, O God. Hallelujah. For Lord, You have exalted Your Word above Your name. Hallelujah. That's Psalm 138. See, He's exalted His Word above His name. Hallelujah. Don't listen to the lies of the devil any longer. Telling you, you don't need the Scripture. Zeroing in only on Jesus' Word. But Jesus said, sell all you have and give it to the poor and come and follow Me. See? Have the people that say that, have they done that? Have they sold everything that they have and all they have left is a shirt on their back? They don't have a computer anymore? They don't have nothing? And go and follow Jesus? See, there's too, there's too many there's people setting up these standards for you. But they're not according to the Holy Ghost. Because when you get born again, the Holy Spirit writes His law in your heart. And you be obedient to that law that He writes in your heart. And that law is backed up with the Holy Scripture. It does not violate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David says, I poured out my complaint before Him. See? I showed before Him my trouble. And we show before the Lord our trouble. We come before the Lord. We say, oh God, help us. And we cry out every day. We cry out to God every day, Lord. We need You, Lord. We need You, Lord. We believe. We trust You. We have faith in You, Lord. But we're being assailed here with doubts. Help us, Lord. And the Lord comes in and He helps us. And He lifts us up. He gives us encouragement and comfort. Or He'll leave us in the test for a while. God is good. God knows exactly what we need. He says in the Scripture, I will never give you more than you can bear, but with it I will make a way of escape for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? That's why it's important that we know the Scripture. Hallelujah. Verse 3, Psalm 142, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me. Has your spirit ever been overwhelmed within you? Then thou knewest my path in the way where I walk. Have they privily laid a snare for me? See? See, people are laying a snare for God's children. That's what the devil's doing with many of you. He's laying a snare for you. And he's talking real soft. And he says to you, you must understand that Jesus said, you cannot follow. You know, this is how they talk. You cannot do this. And, they, and they're very, very meticulous about the way they speak and about how soft they speak. And, and they, they, they're, they're just seducing you, see, with the honey on the lips. And they never have a firm, authoritative voice like Jesus Christ had. No, no. See, Jesus spoke with the authority, with the character of the Father. See, no one could say nay unto Him. Do you understand? Do you understand? You can, you can all day long say, Jesus, you are not real. Jesus, you are this. Jesus, you are that. Okay? You can do that. If you want to be an unbeliever, you can do that. But it doesn't matter. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what He said. But see, the wicked lay a snare for God's people. See, That's what David was praying this. In verse 4, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man, no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Have you ever been there where nobody cared about you? Nobody cared about your soul? Nobody cared if you were standing or if you were falling? They didn't care about you. When people didn't communicate with you and then other people who you have communicated with just cut you off for no reason? Have you been there? Do you know what it feels like? We know what that feels like. Why do we know what it feels like? Because that's exactly what Jesus went through. And Jesus went through it and He looked to the Father. Do you realize in the garden... He took Peter and James and John with him. He said, stay right here. And then you could pick up a rock about the size of a, 
of an orange and throw it as far as you could throw it. That's how far he went away from them. And he fell on the ground, prostrate and prayed in agony, sweating drops of blood. Because the cup was being handed to him. And he drank it for us. And then he went back and the apostles were sleeping. He told them, pray with me. Stay here and pray. I'm going to go over here and pray. Because he had to go pray. He had to go commune with the Father. Hallelujah. Because the weight of the sin was coming on him. He went back and they were all sleeping. He woke them up. Come on, pray, pray. He went back and prayed again. Did that three times. Finally, he told them, sleep on. Sleep on. He said, behold, the betrayer is at hand. And Jude Judas came in and kissed him on the face. Betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. And then all the apostles forsook him and fled. He was all alone. But he wasn't alone, was he? Because the Father was with him. Hallelujah. And the angels were with him, buoying him up, strengthening him in the soul and in the spirit man. Hallelujah. He was the strongest man that ever lived. And he fought the fiercest battle that's ever been fought. Hallelujah. And he overcame. Hallelujah. He overcame because he is the mighty God. And we are His children. And we believe in Him and we know Him. Hallelujah. And we will overcome. Every day, one day at a time, we overcome. Hallelujah. And David prayed, there was no man that, that would stand with him. No man cared for his soul. I cried unto Thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge. Can you see Jesus crying in the garden? I said, Thou art my refuge, Father. Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry. Attend unto my cry. For I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors. For they are stronger than I. And you can hear the Father saying, I'm delivering you, my son. I'm delivering you. I'm giving you the strength you need to bear. I'm giving you the strength you need to make it through, my son. Not now, now, my son. Not now, now. You will be at my right hand. Hallelujah. Not now, now, my son. You're coming up. Hallelujah. You see? And Jesus, for the, for the glory that was set before Him, for the joy... Hallelujah. He endured the cross, despising the shame. See, we know this from the Holy Scripture. This is the only way we're going to make it through, people. By knowing what the Holy Spirit's communicating to us. By His Spirit. Testing it with the Word. See? you got to test it with the Word. And then, bring my soul out of prison. Can you see Jesus? Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Hallelujah. Remember Jesus, what he said in John 12? He said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. He was fixing to go to the cross, people. Now is the Son of Man glorified. See, Jesus knew what he was doing. The devil didn't know what he was doing. No. The devil didn't know what he was doing. The devil was lying to everybody. Saying, crucify him, crucify him. See? The devil was lying to everybody. Because the devil said, Oh, we gotta kill this. We gotta kill this thing. We gotta kill this man who says he's the Christ. And so the father, just do what you're gonna do, devil. You know, and I'm I'm gonna control every move you make. I'm gonna set the stage for you, see? So that when 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 you're killing what you think you need to kill. In all actuality, you're killing yourself. Hallelujah. See? Because that's what happened. Because if the princes of this world had known, they would have not to crucify the Lord of glory. They wouldn't have done it. See? They didn't know what they were doing. And many people that come against God's people, they come against Sharon and I. They come against us. In the real world now, they come against us. They don't know what they're doing. They think they do. I mean, they know they're, they're plotting, they're scheming, they're trying to do this and trying to do that, trying to control us and manipulate us. But in all actuality, ultimately, they don't know what they're doing. Because it's all working together for our good. Because all things work together for our good. Because we love God. And we are called according to His purpose. And the word purpose there is showbread. Hallelujah, showbread. See, He's making us into that showbread. Glory to God. Bread for the nation, see? 
Oh, there's so much. So much richness in the walk with Christ. Hallelujah. So filled with life. Hallelujah. See? Now I'm going to leave you with this. In John chapter 5. These are the red letters now. These are the ones, the red letters that the, the, the Bible unbelievers will tell you. You have to follow the red letters. That's it. Four books in the Bible. You can throw the rest away. You can believe it if you want to, but you really don't need to. Okay? And even you can even see comments on their channel from people. Oh, you're so right about the Bible is just the words of man. It's not the Word of God. And they're proud, puffed up with pride and their arrogancy. And they got no foundation. When the crisis hour comes, they're not going to have any rock to stand on. No rock to stand on. No fountain of life to draw from. I encourage you today, get into the Word. Pray and seek the Lord. Hallelujah. And John, going back to the beautiful Gospel of John, that was written to bring the church's focus back to what it should have been all along. And that's Christ Jesus. God in the flesh. And then people demote Jesus. They put Him on a second level. It's like God the Father is on the top shelf, and Jesus is on the second shelf, and the Holy Ghost is down at the bottom. And they're so ignorant. They have no knowledge, no understanding of the Spirit of God. None at all. Liars. Deceivers. And you people love to have it so, because you don't love the truth. Hallelujah. In John chapter 5. Okay, John 5. Jesus heals the man by the pool. 38 years. The man represents Israel. Crippled. Decrept of life. No help. Just just nothing. Can't get up. Wallowing in sin. And Jesus walks by and says, You want to be made whole? Get up. Take up your mat and walk. He's taking his mat and he's walking with his mat. And here come the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Hey, you can't carry that, that mat. You can't do that on the Sabbath day. See? Tradition. 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 They're erring, not knowing the Scripture. See? Where the Scripture says, I will not have sacrifice, but, but you know, mercy, grace, forgiveness. You know, that's what God says. You see? He doesn't delight as much in sacrifice as in just giving mercy. Hallelujah. And forgiveness. Oh, praise His holy name. Look, Jesus says in John chapter 5, starting in verse 19, he, he starts talking and He's speaking to these Pharisees. Now, He's in the temple. Hallelujah. Then after Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. These are red letters now. You people that don't believe the Bible. You people that just say follow Jesus' words. Okay. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of Himself but what He seeth the Father do. Hallelujah. For what things soever, what things soever, He doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Oh, glory to God. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth Him all things that Himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Oh, glory to God. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Oh, glory to God. That all men should honor the Son. Even as they honor the Father. So you people that are putting Jesus down low, below the Father, you're, you're not doing right, see? That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father. Okay? John wrote that. In the book of 1 John. Okay? If you deny the Son, you don't have the Father. If you deny the Father, you don't have the Son. You're not saved. That's all there is to it. If you're demoting, if you're putting a division between the Godhead, you are not saved. Period. Okay? According to the red letters. According to the Spirit of God, the blood of the Lamb. Verse 23 again, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent Him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He, now here's the important part right here. Listen. Listen very careful. He that heareth my word. Are you hearing his word? He said in Amos chapter 8, there would be a famine in the land. 
And people think that famine is a preaching the Word. No, it's a hearing. Hearing the Word. Hearing the Word. Are you hearing literally, physically, with your ears, the preaching of the Word of God? Are you hearing it? That means, are you taking it in? That means, is it changing your life? Or is it just going one ear and out the other and you're saying, oh, that was wonderful. See? But there's no effect in your life. No no change in the inner man. See? Hallelujah. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Oh, praise God. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death. Hallelujah. From death unto life. Okay? Now let's look at that verse one more time. Real good. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. Hallelujah. Hath. Everlasting, half everlasting life. That's me. That's my wife. That's many of you. But some of you, you don't have that. You're still trying to get it. And you're working so hard laying those bricks, laying those bricks of that wall of untempered mortar, of false teaching, trying to make something, trying to get saved. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. I have it. I have everlasting life. And I'm glad. And I know I have it. By the witness. And by the experience. See? Because the experience is, is related to His experience. The Father, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. That means everything the Father sent me to do, I'm sending you to do. Okay? And the Father sent Jesus to suffer, and He sends us, and we suffer. See? We travail in pain together until now. Hallelujah. We take up anything that's lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the body's sake. Hallelujah. Just like Paul wrote in Colossians. We do the same thing for others, for others, for others. Our life is about for others. See? That's what the Christian life is. It's a giving, giving, giving. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about others. It's about God. It's about giving glory and honor to God. Praise and worship in His name. Hallelujah. Right now, today. But He says, Hath everlasting life. If you believe, hallelujah. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. See, right then when he said that in John, it's recorded in John 5.24. This is before he feeds the 5,000. This is before he walks on the water. This is before he, John chapter 7, 8, and 9. Before he raises Lazarus from the dead. He said here, okay, he said here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. Hallelujah. And shall not come into condemnation. Glory to God. But is passed from death unto life. Have you done that today? Oh, we have. Hallelujah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. The dead, the spiritually dead, were hearing the voice of the Son of God. Right there. And they that hear shall live. Now who gives us the hearing? The Father. The Father. Remember in Matthew 16, Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? Some said, Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. He said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Oh, Peter. He said, Oh, my Father's revealed that to you. <laughs> See? And the Father gives it to whom He will. Whom He chooses. Hallelujah. If you don't have it today, cry out to the Father. Break your heart, contrite heart. He will not despise you. See? A broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. He will not turn it away. You say, well, John, how do I have a broken and contrite heart? Just get down in your face. Get down in your face before God and stay there. And just stay there. And just, just whisper. Just say, Father... Give me a contrite heart before you. And just stay put. And He'll meet you. He'll meet you in a way that you will receive life. His life. There's no other life, people. You can't build it. I can't build it. It's a gift from Father. It's His Son. And it comes to us when 
we believe and repent. See? Jesus came on the scene preaching, repent and believe the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God became a man and died on the cross for our sins. And he rose from the dead. He, he conquered death. He conquered death. Do you understand what I said? He conquered it. It has no more power. Death doesn't. For the believer, it has no power. No power. That second death, the death of the body, no power. No power. doesn't matter. They could chop my body up into a hundred pieces. It would have no power over me. It might hurt like everything. <laughs> They're cutting off my elbow first, you know. But that's all right. Because it'll end. The pain will go. And he'll wipe every tear from our eyes. Oh, it's beautiful. The life. There's only one way to get the life, and that's to bow down and believe the gospel. But once you believe, you have everlasting life. John chapter 5, 24, 25. Hallelujah. Verse 26, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man the Lord bless you today in understanding and the Lord give you understanding today many of you you're just following false teachers on YouTube you're following the false you're following men and you're, you're, you're on your way to a very dark place if you don't repent and turn, do a 180. Come back to the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ. The living word. He is the living word, Jesus Christ is. And he has preserved his written word, which he spoke. He spoke it into the hearts of men. And they wrote it down. Okay? And you can rely upon that. It's very reliable. Very, very solid. You cannot change it. And the devil... And his people hate it. And when people demote the scripture, know that they are not working for the true and living God. They are fakes. They are fakes. And when the crisis hour comes, they will fall. They will fall flat down. They will not stand in the crisis hour. In Jesus' name, amen.